about moving to Montana was the diversity of game that's, you know, at your fingertips, so to say. So, you know, we've got whitetail, mule deer, elk, antelope, upland bird, um, black bear, just starting to get into that. Never really was much of a bear hunter, but going to explore that option now. Um, there's just so many things and, you know, things to do year round. High mountain, you know, hikes, backcountry fishing, crick fishing. Um, there's so many different things that you can do that it's just a great place to be if you're an outdoorsman. It's been a challenge. The, the country's larger, the mountains are bigger, the altitude is an equalizer, you know. Um, people underestimate how hard it is to shoot a public land bull close to a you know decent sized city. Today, we actually used a couple different parts of the bear. Um, we used the back straps to create the pieces for the street taco, and we used just a nice, big old, tough part of the muscle group for our carne asada. So my husband and I are pretty liberal when we trim out our wild game. Um, we actually save all of the scrap, all of the stuff that has like the sinew and different things that you would not eat yourself. And we just put it in a pile over here and we throw it in the smoker and we make treats for our dog. So we know that we can be liberal without having any waste or at least a far less amount of waste than if you were going to trim it out and chuck it. For the carne asada, we actually use the rump piece. And in order to tenderize that, we spread out a little bit of uh, cling wrap on the countertop to make a work area, and then actually pounded that out so that it was nice and thin and tender, so that when we cook that on the grill, it's delicious and palpable and easy to eat. Over the years, what we've learned to do is take the awesome stuff that we harvest off the mountain and bring it in and make some great stuff. I think people have a tendency to um, get intimidated, I guess, by wild game and get in this mindset that it's something different. And it certainly is. It's a little bit leaner. It's uh, a little bit um, tougher sometimes because they walk around. It's pretty much the most organic meat that you could eat. My husband and I have done a lot of cooking. I think. There's a couple of secrets to cooking game meat, and that goes to um, one, don't overcook it, or cook it forever, depending on what you're actually cooking. <clears throat> In this case, with bear, we're gonna lean more towards the cook it forever to make sure that we get it cooked good so that we stay healthy when we eat it and we don't end up with something that we don't want, like trichinosis. Ulus were traditionally used by Inuit women, and they were a primary tool when it came to skinning seal and filleting fish. The herb bowls and other uses were certainly um, common as well, but that was their primary function historically. So we've got some green onions we're gonna grill up. Got a little olive oil, salt and pepper on those. The grill is an awesome place to make your tortillas. Um, we've always done them on the stove, but recently switched to this method. It's way faster. I just put a little oil in the Ziploc with them, shook them like crazy, got them all shiny. This step right here really makes your street taco feel more authentic. You just wanna keep them on the grill until you see them start to bubble a little bit. We're gonna shut it for a second. You can see here that these tortillas are starting to bubble. See those little pockets right there? That's what you want to see. So then you have these nice little grill marks here. Makes your shell yummy. Really gives it that authentic quality. Just like that. Let's pull those really quick.
All right, our green onions, let's move those over to just a little bit more heat. Get them with some grill marks on there. A little bit of char, which really opens up their flavor. We've got a little carne asada here. This is our meat marinating for 24 hours and all that citrus you can see it's thin tender it's been pounded I'm gonna stretch it out let that cook char up on that side really good hopefully catch fire a little bit so it has a nice charcoal on that side. That's nice and thin, so it's gonna cook thoroughly and evenly all the way through, which again is really, really, really important, especially when you're preparing the bear. Um, we're just gonna let that cook at this heat, get a nice char on it, and then we'll come back, pull it off, and get our street tacos going. So the cool thing with the street tacos and why they work so great, especially for the bear, is we are cutting them super, super, super thin. So what that means is when we cook it, it's actually gonna cook faster and more thoroughly to make sure that we get it well, well done. Generally speaking, anytime you're using a part of the animal besides the back strap or the tenderloin um, for anything other than burger, I really like to have something where you can cut it thin um, so that it stays tender and you don't have that chewiness that comes along with a gamey meat. These guys here, take a look at that side. A little bit of char in there. Flip them over. All right. Our street tacos have a little bit of black bear backstrap mixed with some cumin, paprika, a little Greek seasoning, which is oregano, parsley, salt, and pepper. Um, we've topped them super traditional. So you've got your minced onions, a little bit of cilantro, limes if you want them, radishes to add. We've got a couple different toppers, some pineapple salsa, a little pico de gallo, so you can make these bad boys exactly what you want them to be. My wife, Carrie, and I have a great relationship. I think now she's killed like a half dozen deer on public land, and she is an amazing professional chef and has taught me a lot in the process of how to cook and care for some of this stuff. And it's been great to see her enjoy, you know, taking hard-earned, high-protein, you know, from timber to table and making a beautiful meal out of it.